of Jesus. Because Luke 4 and 1 says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And then Luke 4 and 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. So he worked hand in hand with Jesus through his ministry uh, for the things that he did. Then he worked hand in hand at his death. His death and, and offering himself as a perfect sacrifice. Hebrews 9 and 14 said, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. He worked hand in hand at the resurrection of Jesus. Actually, all three members of the Godhead uh, had part in the resurrection. All three. Uh, the Father, in Ephesians 1, 19 and 20 says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him, from the dead, and set him at his own right hand at the heavenly places. The son's part, he had the power to take his own life up. We know that. John 10 and 18 said, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself. You see, of course, the Jews was part of this where they crucified him and all this. But they didn't kill him. He laid his own life down. That was part of the plan. He, no man taken his life, but he laid it down voluntarily. He says, I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Then the Holy Ghost in Romans 1 and 4 says, And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. In fact, the main purpose of the Holy Spirit is to tell us about Jesus and to glorify him. That's what his main thing is. We, we've got to glorify him. John 16, 13 and 14 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. You see what he did? Yes. All of these things. That is who the Holy Spirit is. That's who he is. That's what, that's, that's, that's what he is, uh, he's existing in you. And that's all these things he can do within you. Isn't that wonderful to know yes. that he is doing these things for us and we've got to let him. You know, there's where it sort of can be cut off. We've got to let him do these things. Now I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to just think about it. How do you really know when the Holy Spirit is living and working in you? Now I'm talking to each one person, myself included, all of us today, and I want us to think about this question. How, let's just put it out, how do I really know when the Holy Spirit is living and working in me? Well, I want to give you a scripture first. Paul is talking here. Paul writes that we can determine whether works are of the flesh or of the spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is working in us, this is what you should see. Now, this scripture, and it's a very familiar scripture, and it's one I think we need to read a lot, Galatians 5, 19 through 25. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, 
variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not, everybody say, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's how you know if the Spirit's living in you and working in you. If any of these things is in there, we need to get rid of that garbage. We need to get rid of that. There's a lot of things here, and we need to know exactly what each other means. Now, here's how we know if it's working. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 3 and 16 uh, and 17, Paul tells us, again, I read it a few minutes ago, that we are the temple of God. God's Spirit lives within us. But I don't think that He will live in an unclean temple. I just don't think he will. And the scripture says it. He will not live in an unclean temple. The Holy Spirit is a distinguished person. And he's not going to live in filth. Amen. He's not going to do it. He's not going to live in filth. Well, let's just look at us for a few minutes. If you were looking for a place to live, and you're driving up and down the road looking for a place to live, I guarantee you, you're not going to want a filthy place. You're not going to want something that there's junk all around and garbage has been there and rats running here and there. I guarantee you don't want that. You don't want that. So if you don't want that, don't you think the Holy Spirit don't want that? And where's his temple? Right here. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit and he does not or he will not live where there's filth. He won't do it. Amen. So he's given us every opportunity. He's given us the scriptures where we can say, well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to do that. I didn't know all about that. Well, then go to Word. It will tell you what you should not do. And it will tell you what you should be full of. Love. Joy. Peace. Meekness, kindness, gentleness, that's what we should be full of. That's when we know when the Spirit is living in there and working. That's when we know these things. Sister Faith, mm -hmm. if the Holy Spirit within us is it keeping us from finding, or is it keeping us from what nailed our Savior to the cross, entertainment? If, we, if what nailed our Savior to the cross, if we find that entertainment, how can the Holy Spirit be in us? I don't think it is if we look at it as entertaining, you know. Uh, what it should do is take us to our knees, crying yeah. out to the Father for what He has done. And I think there's not enough of that going on today yeah. either. Us falling down on our knees and thanking and praising God for what He has done for us, what He's led us through, brought us through. I'm going to sum up the lesson, then I'm going to give you some, a few minutes if you want to comment. But I want to sum up the lesson by saying again about the Trinity. The most basic thrust of the gospel message is that God the Father was compelled to action by His love. It all comes down to love. The grace of Jesus expressed that, expressed that love in action in His life, death, and resurrection through his suffering and death on our behalf Jesus procured salvation for us the Holy Spirit implements and appropriates what was planned by the Father and executed by the Son in the life 
of each individual believer. Now, I, I hope that I have given you today some tools to be able to explain to others who the Holy Spirit is. There's a lot of people that doesn't understand it. They don't understand the person of the Holy Spirit.